Now, Positively Ernie with Ernie Anastas, a New York TV legend and radio host with great positive stories and interviews. Thanks, Ernie. You're the best. And now, here's Ernie. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Always nice to have you on board. We love this program. We always talk about good things, uplifting things, but we also deal with reality. You know, what's really going on out there and how can we help you with a problem? We like to solve problems, okay? We want to be peacemakers and not troublemakers. Uh, and, and following the news every day, there are so many stories to work on. But today I want to talk about something really interesting. I want to talk about an image, a good image, something that's important in your life, your reputation. Who are you? What do you stand for? We're talking about branding. And, and how this is important in your business world, of course, but also in your personal life. I can't think of anybody better, an expert, a guru, when it comes to public relations than Mindy Barnett. Say hi to Mindy. Hi, Mindy. Hey. Oh, my gosh. You should be in PR for me. Oh I my love God. it. You're Thank great. you. You know, people are, are going to hear you now, and they're going to watch you. Um, you are really an exceptional person. You're We've known each sweet. other a long time. And you're so good at what you do. Mindy is a hardworking person. And isn't that a big part of being successful, working hard and being sincere? Yeah, and, and very sincere and always taking the high road. That's always been my MO. No matter what happens on the path behind you, yeah. always do the right thing. Yeah. Just because it, you want to be a good person, I believe in karma. And, you know, it comes back, right? So 100%. Well, but yeah, you, it's hard work is 150%. It's a big thing. Game. And, and you are one of the most sought after people in the public relations business. You've got a great success story, Mindy. Thank and, you. And I want people to know about you because you've got so many clients and a variety of clients, right? How do you, how do you pick and choose? Because sometimes people come to you and you say, well, I'm not quite sure if I want to represent, you know, this product or, or this company. How do you decide? Well, I, I have to say, I always like think about how, what their product or what their, you know, their area of expertise yeah. might be, how they're going to serve the greater good of the public. Because back in my heyday, I was in news and I, I was on the receiving end of the yeah. pitches. And I always know as a reporter, journalist, and I still kind of identify myself a little bit in that lane, mm -hmm. which I think helps me do my job as a publicist sure. that much better. I know they're obviously just looking out and being an advocate for their readers, listeners, you know, viewers, et cetera. So when I'm, you know, interviewing with a client, I think about what they bring to the table that's going to better the lives, whether it's information or product or mm -hmm. they have a really great book or, oh. you know, whatever it may be. Um, I can't say I've turned down too many. The main biggest issue I think that I've, I've kind of stumbled upon in my 20 plus years in the business sure. now um, has been like more when people aren't really like good on with the media they're they come off abrupt or they're right. not accommodating to the mm -hmm, media mm -hmm. um and that to me is a liability right. because i need you know to, to, be, to keep the media you know in good graces and, if and you as will, you mentioned serve your, your news background you totally know, having been a performer being on the air and, and covering stories you appreciate that because you know that that's i talked about image Right. And how important right. it is. And, and to be able to protect your reputation as well as the, the company that you're representing. Because that's so important to you. Now, let me ask you this. Because a lot of people out there are saying, you know what? When I'm watching either television or picking up a magazine, I'm on the Internet and so forth, there is a plethora of material. We are bombarded yeah. constantly. Pop-ups. Yeah. You you're on the telephone. There's an ad or something popping up all the time. How do you decide what direction to take with your client in terms of getting them the most exposure with all of this competition? I watch the news, number one, mm. like religiously, yep. all of the news, sure. national, local, et cetera, et cetera, and really see what's going on in the news cycle and what they bring to the table. I'll give you a really quick example. Yep. So one of my clients is out and actually in LA, it's a, a nonprofit for mental health. And we're recording this in October, okay. right? It's Bullying Awareness Month. So not only am I, you know, I pitched something tied in with Bullying Awareness Month, right. but researched what's going on in California specifically. And there's an uptick in culturalism as it pertains to bullying. Okay. A lot of Muslim students, a lot of African-American students and Latino students specifically mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the LA vicinity yeah. um, are, are feeling that they're being bullied and they're scared to go to school. Right. So we pitched it along those lines because that's sort of what new, it's, 
yeah. news you can well, use, you right? It's compelling yeah. information. Right. And then my client's coming off as the expert as she is, sure. um, well-deserved to speak mm -hmm. to the the research, also kind of come up with a solution to the research and offer mm -hmm. advice for parents mm -hmm. and educators watching what they can do to help curb the problem. So you have to do, like we just said, your homework. Mm -hmm. You have to know what is the best way to position your mm -hmm. client and your product. Mm -hmm. And then you go uh, and, and you, you find the places where, where she or he belongs and then you do it. Exactly. Um, I, you know, I, I find that fascinating because it, it, it's such a challenge, particularly now. You know, in, in, back in the days when there were only three networks and we didn't have the internet, it was a lot simpler, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, I, yeah, it was. I yeah. mean, people watched X, Y, or Z, right. and that's where you got your your information for yeah. the, the given day. But now, even I mean, I hate to say it, social media, which isn't really obviously like regulated by like right. any over, over government body in regards to fact checking and things yeah. like that, yeah. people can get scoop like mm -hmm. other stations mm -hmm. and stuff. They get information from a variety of places. So you just want to know who the audience is. I always say, okay, here's my client. Who who is a, you know who's their audience? Who it's their core customer? Who who do they want to attract? Right. And then who's watching? And the in the audience, where are they watching? And where are they getting their news? And then I'll pitch those places. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Mindy, what everybody looks for is the payoff. Okay. Everybody wants to know. Okay. If I do A, B, and C, uh, what am I going to get for it? Right. So from your experience working with your clients and and just seeing what goes on in the industry. Is it worth it? Is it worth spending the money and putting in the time to present your product? Or people will say, oh, I'd rather do word of mouth or something like that. What do you say? I say it's not worth it's 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 definitely worth it. And mm -hmm. you're going to be it's more of a detriment if you don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to do something. Right. Um, PR. Um, and I'm not just saying this because I'm in the industry. I speak for my colleagues in the field, too. You know, it's obviously much more cost effective than if you were placing an ad or something along those lines on television or radio or, or print. Um, and you're also getting more I guess, more time in terms mm. of sharing your message mm -hmm. and you're being positioned as a thought leader. And it's a third party messenger. People watching, listening, reading know that you wasn't paid for. I mean, you, not everybody knows people have PR people. Right. Some people don't, but most that are on regularly do, but nevertheless, like the news isn't going to pick up one of my pitches just because I sent them the pitch. Doesn't matter if right. I'm friends with them or not. It's yeah. because it's a good story. You have to have a lot of contacts. You have to have a lot yeah. of people skills, and you, you do. do. Yeah. You do because yeah. you I, you're the hardest working person I know. Because I mean, every time really? I call you, I find that talk, hard to believe. No, you're you're Bernie. pretty you're pretty hard working. I really <laughs> mean that because every time, and plus the fact that I appreciate people who respond. And uh, when someone writes to me, when someone calls me, I try to get back to them right away because it's a sign of respect. Totally. And it's also professional to do that. And a lot of people, you know, will just say, I don't care anymore. You have written, uh, you have done so much. Uh, you've written two books, yes. two wonderful books. Thank you. And uh, you can talk about the books and why you wrote them and, and what the message is. I know Intermission is a great book as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that was my first book. Yeah. I wrote that really as a as a form of therapy for myself initially. Um, I wrote that coming out of my divorce. Mm -hmm. I've now been divorced eight years, and it's amicable, and we get along great. Good. And it started it more as like more of a, a guide for co-parenting. Yeah. Um, and then I just shared about the what I went through like mentally and things like that to make the decision to mm -hmm. to proceed. Mm -hmm. um, so that was what I used as an example. But mm -hmm. the the mission of the book is really to encourage people to to pause, not, you know, be patient with themselves, yeah. dig deep into their soul and have courage to make change if like they, that. if they need to have change. Cause we're did you all get good feedback on that book. I did. did. Yeah. yeah. I, and it launched my public speaking, yeah. um, keynoting and things like that, which is really also part of the reason why I, so when I started writing it, I decided I wanted to get into Mindy, some of isn't that. it great, you know, when, when you do something and you, you put your heart into it. Yeah. Uh, that you get good feedback. And even if it's just like from one or two people. Yeah. Right? You feel yeah, like, no, wow, I, I reached definitely. somebody. I did something good with this. Yeah. You have another book. Yes, I do. <laughs> it has a little title. curse word in it, but it, it's it's about women empowerment yeah. um, and about why women compete when it's healthy to compete, when it's unhealthy to compete. That's part memoir. The first book I should mention is full on memoir. Right. This is part memoir and also part research. I interviewed a psychologist and hmm. um, I have some case studies in there and as well and things of that nature. Yeah. But in, in a nutshell, it's it's really about leading with empathy. That's what it says here. Yeah. It, the, the title is you don't need to be a blank to be a boss. Okay? Right. You fill in the, the word. Right. How to flaunt femininity 
embrace empathy and win with a vengeance. Right. So you like don't want to be soft. Yeah. We don't want to be soft, but right. we also don't want to be harsh. We always want to, like I said earlier, do the right thing. Um, take the high road. Do good business, spread good cheer, mm. spread goodwill, and and you know you're going to succeed. So it's really about that. But specifically for me, yeah. um, I do have a small team, a very talented team, mm -hmm. I might say, and um, the inspiration of the book was a blank <laughs> that I worked okay. for a very short lived time yeah. um, in PR, not TV. Yeah. And um, really learned from that experience how I didn't want to be. Mm. So I'm grateful for that experience mm -hmm. because it taught me a lot. Yeah. And also I do believe when you leave with fear, you don't get anywhere. Right. So always leave with kindness. I talk about like allowing your team to make mistakes and the yeah. difference between that and a mishap yes. and things like that. So, you know, Mindy, uh, I have to say this, you know, I'm, I'm married, and I, I have a daughter uh, and a son as well, but a daughter. Uh, I have a, 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 a um, daughter-in-law. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of grandchildren, uh, and I've worked with a lot of women uh, as co-anchors in this business. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing the, uh, so much progress that's come along because, you know, years back, you know, only the men were on the air mm -hmm. and the women were not. And now mm -hmm. we're just seeing such a turnover, which is wonderful. Yes. And, and I, I, I really support that with all my heart. It, I know it makes you a, do. It really makes a difference to see that. I know. And, and there's still more to go. There's still more to go. You know that. And you work towards that, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. I want, I do my best in my part to, yeah. to kind of like keep breaking that glass ceiling, so to speak, for sure. But yeah, no, you're, you're, you're one of a kind in that way. Well, I appreciate In a lot of ways, that. but for Thank sure. Thank you, Mindy. I appreciate that. Now, if there are people, you know, because we have so many viewers and listeners mm -hmm. and who are probably saying, you know what, uh, I'm a college student or I'm thinking about going to college or I just graduated and I love public relations. I love being in that business. Uh, what advice do you have for someone who wants to get into this and maybe eventually be like you, be your own boss. How do you do that? I love that. Yeah. Um, I'm all about mentoring. Talk about that in this book as well, mm. actually. Um, I would say, let's stick with the college aged person, so to yeah. speak. Um, definitely hone the writing skills, at least the way I do PR. It's very, very important to be a strong writer because I write, my pitches are like mini news stories. Yeah. Um, know the news. I actually encourage our interns to do an internship in news, whether mm. it be in print or radio or a television yeah. station, which is my you know, area of expertise yeah. in my background, yeah. just because when you know what it's like to be on the other side of the proverbial fence, you do your job that much better as sure. a publicist, you appreciate deadlines, you know what it's like, you know, you know, on the receiving end of pitches mm -hmm. and things, mm -hmm. and you understand the in and out of the way the business and the news cycle works overall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you know, I would say starting in an agency, a small firm like mine is probably a good place to start right. because you'll get a lot of hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of young talent in my team right. and I groom them and mm -hmm. I see them fly. Some stay, thankfully, cross my fingers. Uh -huh, you know, that's uh -huh. always my goal, but I never want to hold people back. And I'm very proud that a lot of my, like I've had a former employee who went on to work for the Comcast, um, you know, in corporate right. headquarters in Philadelphia. I have another one that works for a publishing company. Like they've gone on to big one started her own firm in Denver. So it, it makes me very proud that I yeah. have a small hand in their success and sure teaching them the ropes. Well, you know, I like what you're saying about uh, being aware and, and reading and watching because in, in the news business, you do learn a lot. Um, you learn how to present a story. One of the things that we've always done in the newsroom is every time we'd get ready to do the next day's news and preparing for our meetings, how do we advance the story? You're always looking for, okay, we, we, we reported this yesterday, yes. but how do we advance it? Yes. What's new today? Yes. So you have to do that in public relations as yes. well. Yes, I do um, that all the time with my team. Exactly. Let's advance it. Let's advance it. Like how something do you ran, it? or like there's a study, and maybe it was on CNN or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, stop pitching the same thing. They just covered it, but let's let's advance yeah. it. Like, right. what else can we bring to the table that hasn't been covered yet? And, yeah. And and another line that we use often: uh, don't bury the lead. Yeah. Because many times, you know, you write a story, and then towards the end of the story, you've got a chunk of information, a real nugget, yeah. and you say that should be at the top. Yes. Yes. So. That's what you learn when you're involved in journalism in any form. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And I same thing with pitches. I say to them, these reporters are getting hundreds of pitches a day, plus all their internal emails that they have to go through. You literally
literally have like two seconds to catch their attention mm -hmm. and it can't be sensational. Mm -hmm. Certainly it's got to be factual, but you need to make it compelling and you need to tell them what the story is about exactly. in like that one sentence. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this, because th this is kind of a serious area, too, and that's uh, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and, and the misuse of mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. of, of the media. Mm -hmm. You know that there is a lot going on out there. There are fake images that are being presented, fake stories. That's a serious problem, Mindy. It uh, is. And you and I are in the same industry, the same business. How do we work uh, to, to prevent some of that? How do we... How do we fight that? Because that's a serious problem, and it's also extremely harmful. And you can take it in different directions. Use it in the media, yeah. you know, the dissemination of information, but also with young people, young kids. Yeah. Their, their faces, their bodies, their reputations are, are destroyed Yes. because of the, the misuse of this great technology that's out there. Yes. I, you know, that's a great question, Ernie. And sadly, I don't have like a really good answer yeah, sure. for it. But, you know, having repped and still repping a technology, big in tech, technology company, I know that, you know, the tech companies, big tech has to take ju ju their own due diligence. Yeah. To, you know, there's a lot of great, obviously, that the AI, you know, platforms do. Mm. Um, we're very lucky to have that on our, in our back pockets now. But I think that they need to figure out a way so that it isn't abused. I can tell you two quick, fun, not funny, but like two quick personal okay. stories. So I, on top of everything you just said, I'm also, in, thankfully, in my <laughs> last term of graduate school yeah. um, for clinical psychology. For but but. A lot of I had a classmate that wrote his his term paper with AI and got expelled. So oh, like I they know. do like fact checks and sure. they can do like screenings. You sure. have to submit it to a certain platform when you mm -hmm. submit papers. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean that's a, a you know obviously a right. university and it's a graduate program. So they have the bandwidth mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not I don't know if every school in America can can afford that. But yeah. nevertheless, um, we, you know that was something that came about and I was like it's. There, yep. it's I, I, and so, and then I have colleagues that write press releases with AI. I won't do that. I mean, I mm -hmm. like to write. I love mm -hmm. to write. I yeah. still feel like I'm a journalist. Right. Um, but but I think there's so so much more when you sit down with Without pen and paper, and keyboard and fingers, and right. paying it out yourself. Yeah. It's your own brain. It's your own knowledge. It's, mm -hmm. it's your own stamp. You know of you. And and, all, and Mindy, you know, with all due respect, um, a, a lot of people will say there's always a plus and a minus with mm -hmm. anything. Uh, there may be some use of AI in terms of gathering information mm -hmm. to be able to utilize in your article, mm -hmm. uh, and and not and not particularly you know just having the whole thing written uh, without any any real sense of touch and feel to the story. Right. Uh, so you know we have to monitor all these things. I want people also to know a little bit more about you because you know here you are you're you're, you're doing so many wonderful things. You're a highly successful person. And, and you're a great role model for a lot of people. But you're also a mom. You've got two wonderful children. Thanks. And you care yeah. about that. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's an important side of you that people should see and say, you know what? Here's a woman who's extremely successful. But, you know, she also has these personal values. And she has a life and that life helps you with your work, doesn't it? It does. Thank you so much for yeah. saying that. Yeah. Yes, I have a 16-year-old daughter, Ariel, yeah. and I have a 13-year-old son, Julian, mm. who are literally the greatest gifts that I've ever had, you know, I mean, or ever will have, truthfully, and um, bring me so much joy and give me so much purpose and you know, a reason to get up and work really hard yeah. for them and, and, you know, provide them with a nice life as their dad does too. Sure. But nevertheless, you know, um, yeah. It, and it gives me like a, a sense of peace most days, of most course. days, not all yeah, Well, I understand. I'm a parent. Depending I on what's it. going on in I a given it. moment. <laughs> but, but it definitely like an escape from the, yeah. the hustle and bustle of like the day-to-day yeah. Like yeah. work life that I lead. There's nothing like it. I yeah. mean, you know, children are so beautiful. Yeah. You know, particularly, you know, I, I love all the ages, but particularly when they're very young. Oh my goodness. They're yeah. so sweet and, yeah. and they're so innocent. Yeah. And pure. Yes. And and you know, over the years covering news in, in New York for four decades, uh, the stories, I mean, every story, you know, you could talk about sensitivity and you have to be aware of that. But I would always really so uncomfortable when children were harmed when elderly were harmed, mm -hmm. animals, you know, mm -hmm. innocent, innocent, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they're so pure. But as they grow up and as they develop, and to see that love coming back to you, what you've given them and comes back to you, there's nothing like it. I it's know. Beautiful. And see them become, like, independent and, yeah. and develop their own personalities and in their own driven, like, you know, 
paths that they want to take and things yeah, like that. It's yeah. really, it's really special. Uh, I always ask uh, kind of my, my final question. And that is if you were to pass on some advice to a newborn, something that they might be able to, you know, look at later in life, you make a little notation and say, I want you to remember this. Is there something uh, that you can share as, as a parent, as a mom, mm-hmm. but also as a very successful business person, as a woman, what would you want to share with a newborn to say, maybe this will help you in your life? Okay, so I, this is something that I've learned, and I'm still trying to take this advice myself mm. today, okay? Mm. But I think not, I mean, planning and having a roadmap is important. I've always been a goal setter. And when I reach a goal, I'm setting the next goal. And yep. sometimes I'm setting the, the next goal before <laughs> I reach the goal. But taking a moment to enjoy the journey and not worry so much about tomorrow and just be as, it sounds cliche, Mm. but just try to be as present as you possibly can. I think I missed, I loved college. I went to Hofstra by the way. Um, but I, I loved it, but I was so dead set about getting in my first news job that I really like, literally I thought about it every single day of my college career. And I, I don't want to say I missed out on things, but I think I could have enjoyed my time there probably mm-hmm. more, knowing that I didn't, I wasn't going to need to worry because eventually you always land where you need to land, right. and everything works out. So not worry as much, maybe. Not worry as much. I yeah. like that's good advice. Now, if people want to reach you, uh, if they want to get to you and say, okay, I, I, I want to take advantage of your services and, yes. and what you have to offer, tell everybody how they can reach okay. you. Okay. So Mindy. Instagram is Mindy and it's M I N D I E yeah. dot Barnett. And I have a website for my PR firm, which is rather long, but it's M B and Associates pr.com and and is spelled out and i do obviously regular pr campaigns we rep authors in a variety of industries i do media coaching yep. and i also do pr coaching I, if you know don't necessarily have a budget to hire a firm like myself or uh, mine i should say um you can hire me on an hourly rate and i will help you craft a pitch and help you like you know learn how to do it and you know, give you You're, the you some are. tools that you can put in your toolbox. There you go. You are terrific. You know, we, we heard a lot from you today. Thank uh, you. And, and some, some really good inspirational ideas. Uh, there's a great quote that I, I would like to end with now that yes. I'm thinking about it. Yes, yes. Your life should speak louder than your words. Mm. And you spoke a lot today, but your life, everybody who knows you, including me, who sees you in action that speaks louder than anything you could ever say because that is a true example of who you are. Thank you, Ernie. Great stuff. Mindy Barnett, uh, a a real classy act uh, who knows what she's talking about, and I was honored to have you on my program Oh, I'm honored to be here. Great to be with you. Likewise. Mindy Barnett, thanks so much, okay? I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll catch you next time, okay? Bye.